Welcome back to my Commodore 64 memories videos. This is where I look at old Commodore 64 software and some of the technical details behind them. Today we have Smash TV, published in 1991 by Ocean. This is of course an arcade conversion, coded by Nick Jones, graphics by Lee Ames and musician Jaron Tell. We're going to be looking at the disc version today, the PAL disc version. I have very fond memories of this game. When it came out, I thought it was technically excellent. Of course, uh, Nick Jones also programmed Cybernoid and Cybernoid 2. This is going to become apparent later on. In C64 debuggery in the full screen mode, but with the red bounding boxes indicating where sprites are, we can see a rather lovely, large, uh, kind of like separated out sprite sheet where we've got eight sprites in each horizontal band showing the high resolution text over the top of a nice multi multicolor bitmap screen. So we have this rather splendid music in the background, but then we have these rather nice graphical effects as well. And I think this just goes to show really that uh, there's quite a lot of polishing work and care and attention going into this conversion. I think it's technically quite excellent. There's certainly a lot going on on this screen, especially from 1991. Later on, during this uh, attract mode or introduction sequence, we can see that we've got some sprites going to come up on the screen. Rather a large logo, judging by the sprite definitions that are coming along. And there we are. A large, very large actually for the time, uh, sprite sheet with very complex, well, with relatively complicated uh, character set for the sprite logo over the top of the bitmap, multicolor bitmap screen. It does really look lovely. And then we have this other screen here with some animated characters over the top with the kind of like television characters and like a stage or something like that. which. You know, it looks really nice and colourful, doesn't it? And then we have this same Wizzy logo over the top of the Monticello bitmap screen. Again, looks really lovely. It kind of reminds me a little bit about the uh, intro sequence in the arcade, especially for Bomb Jack, where that also has quite a large logo. Some of it is using sprites in the arcade version, actually, for the logo, and then one part of it is the tile screen. So after a, another turbo load, then we're greeted by this title screen. And this is an unusual game because you can actually control your movement direction and your fire direction independently if you have two joysticks or if you want to use a keyboard or a mixture of keyboard and joystick, you can. I think using this C64 debug GUI, it's going to be quite difficult to have two independent joysticks configured along with the keyboard because it has uh, really sticky keys, so I'm going to configure it so it uses the same joystick for move mode and also fire mode as well. And then uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, fire reliably in the direction that I'm pointing at least. So let's get into the game, and of course it's still using a multicolored bitmap screen. Uh, let oh no, that's the wrong key. I press the Windows key rather than the Alt key for firing. Whoops. Okay, so we can see where we've got red bounding boxes for sprites, but you'll notice that when I shoot my bullets, then uh, those bullets and also the pickups in the background as well, they're actually pasted into the multicolor bitmap screen. Uh, because if you remember in Cybernoid 2, especially. Uh, we have quite a lot of uh, software sprites being used and that was uh, those software sprite sprites were being plotted over the top of the multicolor bitmap mode in Cybernoid 2 and no surprise because it's the same coder uh, we have this static bitmap screen uh, game screen rather and it's just using the same kind of effect of having software sprites mixed in with hardware sprites and some multiplexed hardware sprites as well. This game throws around uh, quite a large number of sprites at times. And so I think this game uses quite a good multiplexer. We'll have a little bit of a look at the multiplexer later on, I think, just to see what type it is, how efficient it could be. But yeah, you can see from this game, look, 
the software sprites with the hardware sprites really does make this game look very special and because it's using bitmap mode as well it actually looks really very colorful let's see if we can get a spinning oh yeah there we go there's a spinning pickup thing you can see look how busy this game really does get uh, with the software sprites and the hardware sprites mixed in together. Of course, you can see the software sprites because they do not have the red bounding boxes that the hardware sprites do in this C6040 buggery. So it really does go to show where the hardware sprites are and where the software sprites are. I'm just trying to pause the game on a frame with a decent number of sprites. I think that'll do. It's certainly more than eight sprites. We've got two sprites coming on in the uh, left-hand border there. And I think we've got about 11 or 12 sprites on screen. So let's move the targeting cursor down the screen and we'll see when it introduces the new sprite definitions. If it's an efficient multiplexer, and it certainly looks like it is, then it will change the sprite definitions and sprite pointers, rather, and the colors, and also the sprite positions as early as possible underneath the sprite just as it finishes drawing and it does that there and then again it changes the next sprite sorted in the y position from top to bottom just underneath when the sprite finishes displaying so yes it's a very efficient as early as possible sprite multiplexer let's have a look at this game now in icu 64 because icu 64 doesn't have the annoying sticky keys problem that c64 debug GUI does I've got the bitmap screen view open there in the middle and then the sprites frames, the sprite sheet rather, and on the far right hand side. So we can see during the game, uh, we can see exactly now with the debug bitmap view there, we can see exactly where the software sprites are and how they're being drawn. And you can see it very clearly there with those uh, spreading out three-way bullets. And we can see that the sprite frames don't seem to be dynamically changing uh, during the game. Uh, if I, yeah, you can see exactly how much code is being executed. I think now we're at the end of this screen. So notice in the bitmap view now that the map should render in the bottom left hand corner and also the animated doors will appear in the bitmap. That means it's animating the bitmap screen with the animated doors and of course the, the player bullets and some of the enemy bullets as well. Of course in the debug bitmap view there we can see very clearly that the score is animating in the bitmap and also the number of lives or the pickup or the prize that you get are also dynamically animating in the multicolor bitmap screen there in the debug bitmap view. Now the debug sprites sprite sheet view is open in the top right hand corner. So now when I move between the screens, uh, there we go, we've got some dynamic sprites being or sprite frames being copied in between the levels. So this is how the game gets quite a lot of variation in its sprite graphics, is that between the screens it copies in new sprite frames from somewhere else in memory. And that's because half the Vic Bank is being used for the multicolor bitmap screen mode. So we only have a, well, slightly less than half of the Vic Bank left for uh, multicolor or any kind of like sprite frames really. So that's why the game will copy in new sprite frames between each level, which is good, right? It's a nice technical feature and it really helps improve the graphical variation of this game. There's actually a ton of sprite frames for each of the enemy types. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are always very much appreciated. Take care, have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.